Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com, where we are all about developing on the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kits. On today's show, we are going to show you how to control an LED from the GPIO header on the Jetson Nano. The expansion header on the Jetson Nano has 40 pins. There are pins which can supply power and ground, general purpose I.O., which we call GPIO, I2C, and a serial UART. The Jetson Hacks website has a pinout for the header. Here it is over here in this window. You can see the pin layout here. Pin one over here in the picture is right here. And then the one above it is pin two, three, four, and so on. Let's talk about the header pinout. The GPIO header is pin compatible with the Raspberry Pi. While the pin layout is the same, the electrical characteristics are not. For example, the Raspberry Pi provides enough current on the GPIO pins to directly drive an LED while the Jetson Nano does not. Also, the Raspberry Pi has a PWM output and the Jetson doesn't. Let's take a look at this header pinout diagram. Oh, Google served me an ad, just a moment. I can learn to play like a flounder for only $129. I don't know why I want to play like a flounder, but there you go. When you look at this diagram for the first time, it looks a little bit confusing. So here's how you read it. Let's take a look at an example Let's look at pin number 15 here. It's labeled LCD underscore TE. LCD underscore TE is a signal name. The color of the circle indicates which group it belongs to. And then we have the sysfs name, GPIO 194, which we can use from Linux to access the pin. One thing that some folks find confusing is that the header pins can have different assignments. Frequently, you'll hear people talk about different interfaces on the GPIO pins, such as SPI or I2S. You will also see on the header pinout that there are different functions listed. So, for example, we see SPI and I2S. But here's the thing. These are the recommended pins to use if you decide to configure your Jetson with these functions. Now, in order to configure these pins, you need to modify what is called the device tree to reroute some of the signals between the header and the Jetson Nano Tegra module. The device tree is a low-level specification, which is basically a map of the signals from the Jetson module to the rest of the carrier board, which of course includes the expansion header. With that said, if you are using the default image, then everything is a GPIO pin except those marked as power, ground, I2C, and UART. Both the I2C and UART pins are directly connected to special hardware made to handle those tasks. If you don't know what I2C and UART mean, hit the subscribe button because those topics are coming up soon. With that out of the way, in our example, we will wire up a LED and blink it from the Jetson Nano. In order to do that, we need to do some calculating. We are going to use a five millimeter LED. This is a garden variety type of part. Typically you can get one of these in a bag of parts meant for experimenting with an Arduino or Raspberry Pi or you can buy them individually. I'll leave a link in the description. Here's a schematic of the circuit that we are going to use. We are going to connect to the five volt rail on the Jetson, go through a current limiting resistor to our LED. The LED connects to the collector of the transistor. The emitter goes to ground on the Jetson. And then the base of the transistor goes through a base resistor to the Jetson Nano GPIO pin. Since you may be using different parts, let me show you how we calculated these resistor values. Let's do the LED one first. The first question is, why do I need this resistor? The answer is that LEDs are little pigs. They will just suck up all the current that they can until the magic smoke comes out of them. In order to prevent that, we use a resistor to limit the current that it can draw. That's why it's called a current limiting resistor. So we're going to have to use a little bit of math here. Probably one of the first things that you learn in electronics is Ohm's law. We've rearranged it a little bit for our purposes, but basically what it says is that the resistance is equal to the voltage over the current. In other words, current, voltage, and resistance are all related. We are going to set the limit of the amount of current that the LED can actually draw by selecting a proper resistor. That's because a resistor's current value responds directly proportional to the applied voltage. We need to know a couple of things about the LED. LEDs are light emitting diodes. 
diodes only allow the flow of electricity in one direction, so it has a plus side and a minus side. And the LEDs have what is called a forward voltage, which is basically the minimum voltage difference between the cathode and anode that you need to supply to the LED to get it to light up. Another thing that we need for our calculation is the forward current, which is the maximum amount of current that the LED is able to handle continuously. So we're ready to apply Ohm's law. We take the five volts that we are supplying from the Jetson and subtract out the forward voltage of the LED. And then we divide that by the 20 milliamps. 20 milliamps is 0 0.020 amps. So you always wanna make sure that you get the right units here. We do that calculation and then we get 150. And the omega symbol here represents ohms, which is the measure of resistance. So in a perfect world, we would throw a 150 ohm resistor on there and be done with it. But here's the thing, it's not a perfect world. Most resistors have some type of tolerance built into them. Inexpensive resistor, like at this level, can have a tolerance of 5% or 20%. It's hard to tell. Typically, you would select a larger resistor value, 220, 330, something like that. That takes care of the tolerance issue. And the other thing about LEDs is that they will last longer if you run less current through them. They won't shine as brightly, though. For example, I selected a 330 ohm resistor because that's what I had in my little toolbox. Okay, so now we're ready to talk about this transistor. It is a bipolar junction transistor, NPN. This top junction here is called the collector. Here's the base. And here's the emitter. We are using this transistor as a switch. Current applied at the base of the transistor controls the current flow from the collector to the emitter. Okay, so what does that mean? If we hold this GPIO pin low, which is zero volts in this case, the transistor is in cutoff mode. So it appears to be an open circuit between the collector and the emitter. But here's the clever trick. There's an amount of current applied to the base at which point the transistor starts to saturate. Then the transistor starts acting like a short circuit between the collector and the emitter. At that point, the current flows to our LED and it becomes happy and lights up. The thing to remember here is that it is current that controls the base, not voltage. So let's figure out how much current we need to apply to the base to get the transistor to saturate. Here's the formula for the base current. Remember that I means current. The current at the base is equal to the current at the collector divided by the gain of the transistor, which is HFE. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as beta. For this particular transistor, the gain is 100. We want 20 milliamps to go through for our LED friend. So we get 0 0.20 milliamps, which is 0 0.00020 amps. Now we're ready to throw that into Ohm's law. Resistance equals the voltage over the current. The GPIO pin is 3.3 volts on the Jetson. And there's one more trick. We have to subtract out 0.7 volts, which is the voltage drop between this base and the emitter. Earlier, we had mentioned that this was an NPN transistor. That refers to the type of silicon substrate. We take the 3.3 volts from the Jetson, subtract out 0.7 volts for the junction drop, and then we divide it from the amperage that we need at the base. And out of that, we get 13,000 ohms. And now we have a kind of a guideline as to the maximum resistance that you can have to get 20 milliamps out at the collector. You notice that I substituted a 10K resistor versus a 13K resistor. Normally you'd go up to a higher value I know that my LED is protected by this current limiting resistor. So let's take a look at the wiring. It's pretty simple. Here's the diagram for it. Basically, we are going to bring five volts over to our current limiting resistor, which is this guy here. Goes through an LED, through the transistor. Ground is on pin six. And then the base of the transistor goes to the base resistor and that goes to pin 12. Now, depending on which transistor you use, of course, you can have a different layout of the collector base and the emitter. Make sure you check that out. 
And transistor is similar to the LED in that current only flows one way through it. So if it's in backwards, it won't work. Let's go build our circuit. Here are the parts we are going to use. Here's the LED, the transistor, the 330 ohm resistor, and the 10K ohm resistor. Here is the breadboard we are going to use. The rows are all connected together. One A is connected to one E. They're all on the same little circuit here. This is a divider. And then F through J are connected together. This divider means that E and F are not connected together. There's also a power bus. And plus is red. And minus is ground or common. These two rows are not connected to the field pins. Typically you would use this by connecting power to one rail and then bringing it over to this field using a jumper or hookup wire. Same thing with the ground or common. Now resistors have color bands on them which tell you what the value is. So you can memorize that or look it up. That's way too much work for me. I just use my multimeter. You set the multimeter on ohms to measure resistance. So for example, this one is 9.88 kilo ohms. So this is our 10K resistor. In order to help our resistors fit a little bit better, we need to bend them into right angles. So you can just use your thumb. These resistors are tiny. And then if you want to be neat about it, you can cut them to length. So leave about this much or so. I put some blue tack on the breadboard to help keep it in place. It's mostly for the filming part. You'll find that blue tack is pretty useful for holding small parts. Let's install our transistor. You may have to splay the legs of the transistor a little to get it to fit into the breadboard. On most LEDs, the positive side is a little bit longer. Also on these five millimeters, one of the sides of this bulb is kind of flat. That represents the negative side. It's a little difficult to see. Let's install our LED. We will install the positive on the left and the negative we will align with the collector of the transistor. Let's install our current limiting resistor. and our base resistor. Let's install our hookup wire, which connects our circuit to the Jetson. We'll put in the power first. Okay, our hookup wires are done. We have our five volts here. It will go to pin two on the Jetson. Here's the ground, which will go to the Jetson pin six. It's in line with the emitter of the transistor. And here's the hookup wire that goes to pin 12 on the Jetson, which is our GPIO pin. We can connect our circuit now to the Jetson. We want to make sure that the Jetson is unplugged. Once the Jetson is plugged into power, the GPIO header, power and ground pins become live. We don't want that to happen. Pin one is located here. There's a silk screen giving you a little map of all the pin numbers. So our red wire goes to pin two. It's five volts. Our ground is pin six. And then our GPIO is pin 12. We have our circuit all wired up. I've hooked up the Nano, Ethernet, USB, HDMI, and then I plug the power in. In our first test, we will control the LED from the command line. At a very low level, SysFS is the way that we interface with the GPIO pins. Now, normally we cannot access the GPIO pins through user space. So let's turn ourselves into a super user. We access the pins through SysFS. Let's take a look at how they are set up currently.
we are going to use GPIO of 79, which is pin 12 on the Jetson Nano. You notice that it does not show up currently in our list. By using this export command, we can make it accessible to the operating system. So let's do that. Let's take a look again. And now we can see GPIO 79 is now available. Let's set the direction of the pin. It can be either in or out. An innie or an outie. We set it to out here. And now we are ready. The moment of truth. We are going to send a 1 out to GPIO 79, which should turn the LED on. It's almost magic. By sending a zero out to GPIO 79, we turn the LED off. It's very binary. And then when we are done with that pin, we unexport it. Let's take a look at it again. And you notice it's not in the list anymore. A little further down here in the article, we talk about adding a UDEV rule so that we can access the GPIO pins from user space. The directions come from the Jetson.gpio Python library. This is one of the new things added to Jetpack 4.2. The Jetson GPIO library aims to be compatible with the RPI GPIO library. RPI means uh, Raspberry Pi, of course. It is installed in Jetpack 4.2, so let's switch over to that directory. We can see that there is a doc folder, a samples folder. Here's the actual library itself. The documentation file contains information about the samples and the different API calls that you can make. It's pretty extensive, so you'll have to go and take a look through it. We are going to just touch lightly on it today. Some of it is just to be compatible with the RPI GPIO library. So some of the calls look kind of weird. So for example, GPIO set mode, GPIO.bcm. BCM is the chip on the Raspberry Pi. So you can take a look through that. The one that we are going to use today is in the samples file. There's two parts to this. You run the files using this run sample.sh file. Let's take a look at it first. And basically what it does is set the Python path to Jetson GPIO this statement and then it calls the sample file which you specify we are going to use simple out.py let's take a look at it this particular example uses the bcm convention so on a broadcom board this is pin 18 but on the jetson it's a pin 12. basically what this program does is it sets up the board pin numbering scheme to the broadcom version we set the output pin which is pin 12 on the Jetson to GPIO out. We give an initial state here of on, and then we run a loop. You notice that we have imported the time library. That allows us to turn the pin on for a certain amount of time and turn it off. So this while loop, we sleep for a second, and then we switch it either on or off based on the current value. And result is the LED should blink. So let's give it a run. Close that up. We are still in super user mode, of course. Let's switch over to the sample directory. And let's run the sample. And it blinks. 
on, off, on, off. It will do that for a long time. When you want to stop it, hit Control C. Start it up again. That should give you a feeling for how to set up a GPIO pin for output. In the next GPIO video, we will be talking about input. We are going to learn how to read a button. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Mm -hmm.